Hello friends, today we are going to discuss about regulation of blood glucose. So let's start. Blood glucose level, commonly referred to as blood sugar level, is an important indicator of person's well-being like other vital signs such as blood pressure, respiratory rate and heart rate. Normal fasting blood glucose means 8 to 10 hours of meals or an overnight fast is 70 to 100 mg per deciliter and PP2BS means 2 hours after meals that is less than 140 mg per deciliter. It reflects the net balance of availability and utilization of major metabolic fuel that is glucose by the body. Glucose will be available from diet through gluconeogenesis and glycogenolysis and it will be utilized through glycolysis and TCA cycle, glycogen synthesis, lipogenesis, HMP shunt pathway and formation of glucuronic acid through uronic acid pathway. There are four stages of maintenance of blood glucose level. One is absorptive stage, second is post-absorptive phase in case of starvation and in case of prolonged starvation. First we'll see absorptive stage that starts after feeding and lasts up to 3 to 4 hours. Dietary glucose goes to the liver which distributes it to the most of the tissue for energy purpose. Excess of glucose is stored as glycogen in liver and muscle. Next is post-absorptive phase that starts after the absorptive phase and lasts for 16 to 18 hours. In this phase, liver glycogenolysis becomes the major source of blood glucose and muscle uses its own glycogen stores for energy. Glycogenolysis starts declining after 16 to 18 hours and by about 24 to 30 hours it is negligible. Then gluconeogenesis starts gradually and peaks about 24 hours after the last meals. Now we'll see what happens in case of starvation. Liver gluconeogenesis is the main source of glucose between 24 hours to 36 hours of starvation. Fatty acid mobilized from the adipose tissues and becomes an alternative fuel for energy of the most of the tissue. Lactate and glycerol are reutilized for gluconeogenesis. ATP produced in fatty acid oxidation is used in liver for gluconeogenesis and other body functions. High rate of hepatic gluconeogenesis continues for a few days in early starvation. Now we'll see what happens in case of prolonged starvation. If starvation continues further beyond 2 to 3 days and extend into the weeks, hepatic gluconeogenesis decreases and kidney gluconeogenesis becomes the more significant. Proteins in muscle are broken down to provide gluconeogenetic amino acids. Fats are the energy source for the most of the tissues. If starvation continues still further without any feeding, Lipid stores are also depleted and several associated complications like ketoacidosis, dehydration occurs and ultimately death follows. Mechanisms that regulates blood glucose level first is uptake of glucose by extrahepatic tissues, role of liver and role of hormones. First we'll see the uptake of glucose by extrahepatic tissues. Tissues mainly dependent on glucose like RBC, brain, renal medulla, placenta have low CAM glucose transporter like GLUT1, 3 and 5. This uptake is insulin independent. Mind well, it is insulin independent. Extra hepatic tissues like muscle, adipose tissues have GLUT4 is the main glucose transporter and it is insulin dependent. Mind well, it is insulin dependent. Hence, the glucose uptake from blood by peripheral extrahepatic tissues is regulated by insulin. 
and this becomes the rate limiting step in glucose utilization in the absence of insulin. Now we'll see the role of liver. Liver plays a central role in energy metabolism as well as in glucose homeostasis. It participates in interconversion of all metabolic fuels of the body according to the needs of the body. It is centrally located in the circulatory system. Blood from intestine drains into the portal vein and flows into the liver. This means that the products of digestion and absorption directly pass to the liver. Thus, the liver regulates the supply of dietary fuels as well as its own reserve to other tissues. Liver has GLUT2 as glucose transporter and it is freely permeable to glucose and it is not insulin dependent. Liver has glucokinase and hexokinase while most of the extrahepatic tissues have only hexokinase. Hexokinase is saturable, low chem for glucose and it is inhibited by glucose 6-phosphate. While glucokinase is non-saturable, high chem for glucose and it is not inhibited by glucose 6-phosphate. Due to the above properties of glucokinase, liver continues to have high glucose uptake during the hyperglycemia following meals, while the uptake by the extrahepatic tissues is product feedback inhibited due to the accumulation of glucose 6-phosphate even though insulin is present. So at high blood glucose concentration, liver has net uptake of glucose and it is net producer of glucose by glycogenolysis and gluconeogenesis at low or normal blood glucose concentration. Now we'll see the role of hormones. Insulin release is stimulated by the increased blood glucose concentration from the beta cell of pancreas which is GLUT2 as glucose transporter. Other stimuli of insulin secretion are fatty acids, ketone bodies, amino acids and sulfonylureas that is anti-diabetic drugs. Epinephrine and norepinephrine inhibit the insulin release. Action of insulin is decrease the blood glucose level by upregulation of GLUT4 enhancing the glucose uptake by extrahepatic tissues. Insulin promotes glucose utilization by promotes glycolysis by inducing or activating the enzymes glucokinase, phosphofructokinase 1 and pyruvate kinase. It also promotes the TCA cycle by enhancing the activity of pyruvate dehydrogenase. It also promotes the glycogen synthesis by activating glycogen synthase by promoting its dephosphorylation. Insulin increases the hepatic uptake of glucose indirectly by enhancing its utilization in hepatic metabolism. Now we'll see about glucagon which has hyperglycemic effect. It produced by alpha cell of pancreas in response to hypoglycemia and its actions are mostly opposite to the insulin and most actions are on liver. Glucagon promotes glucose sparing by inhibiting glucose utilization. It decreases the glycolysis through phosphofructokinase 1 by decreasing fructose 2 6 bisphosphatase. It decreases the TCA cycle by reducing pyruvate dehydrogenase activity due to low insulin level. Glucagon decreases the glycogenesis by inhibiting glycogen synthase through phosphorylation. It promotes glucose production by increase glycogenolysis by stimulating phosphorylase by its phosphorylation. Glucagon increases the gluconeogenesis by inducing pyruvate carboxylase, phosphoenol pyruvate carboxykinase and glucose 6-phosphatase enzyme. So overall glucagon effect is hyperglycemic. Now we'll see the other diabetogenic hormones. First is growth hormone. It promotes fatty acid mobilization from adipose tissue leading to increased fatty acid oxidation and ATP and NADH productions. And this will inhibit glucose utilization by cells in glycolysis and TCA cycle. 
Next is glucocorticoid hormones. It induces the amino transferase enzyme synthesis leading to enhance the amino acid catabolism. It also induces the key enzyme of gluconeogenesis. Overall they increase the glucose level. And last is catecholamines. It promotes the hyperglycemia by glycogenolysis in liver and muscle. So that is all about regulation of blood glucose. If you find this video informative then please like and share this video and also subscribe my channel. Thank you.